Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and recently RAM speed has been a hot topic with the launch of Ryzen and its Infinity uh, whatever. It's generally accepted that high RAM speed does matter with Ryzen, but what about Intel and Kaby Lake? Do you really need 4 GHz RAM? I don't have the hardware or expertise to fully answer these questions, but I figured it would be interesting to see if faster RAM does in fact increase frame rate on my i5-7600K. Conveniently, my friend Mark is building a new Ryzen system soon and wanted me to test out his kit of 16GB Corsair Vengeance LPX. So while I tested his RAM to make sure it was working properly, I tested three games consisting of The Witcher 3, Hitman, and Fallout 4 at six different RAM speeds. The speeds range from the default 2133 MHz to the highest overclock I could obtain, 3500 MHz. So this should give us a good picture of how RAM speeds scale in these titles. To keep this short, you can check out the full parts list I used in the description, but for each test I'm running my i5-7600K at 4.8GHz paired with my GTX 1070, and each game's settings are on Ultra. To reduce the chance of a pure GPU bottleneck, I ran the majority of my tests at 1080p, but I do have a few 1440p numbers as well, just to see how GPU bottlenecking affected the results. So right off the bat with Fallout 4, we can see some measurable gains with the largest jump in average FPS being between 2133 and 2800 MHz. That first 700-ish MHz boost put up an 8.6% increase, while the 1800 to 3500 MHz increase only yielded about 2.2% in increases. This shows there is some sort of diminishing return here. 1% and 0.1% lows are also improved, but seem to stall out after 2800 MHz. The story remains mostly the same as we move on to Hitman, except that this game scales more evenly as the RAM speed increases. In averages, Hitman had the largest total gain at just over 30%, which is definitely significant. But again, there are diminishing returns as the RAM speed increases, as we can see in this line graph. And last up, at 1080p, we've got The Witcher 3, and it falls in line with the other titles, but did have a significant boost in 0.1% frame rates compared to the other two titles, which did reduce noticeable stuttering. So with this setup at 1080p, 2800 MHz DDR4 seems to be the sweet spot of performance. However, this story changes the second we up that resolution to 1440p. At 1440p, we are putting way more work on the 1070, and as I assumed, the advantages of high-speed RAM seem to disappear. In all three titles, there are very minimal gains between the slowest and fastest speeds, with Fallout 4 seeing almost no change whatsoever. The Witcher 3 does see some improved frame times, but after 2800 MHz, the increases stop. This shouldn't be a big surprise. GPUs have their own separate VRAM, and while faster DDR4 theoretically delivers more data faster, it's only advantageous to the CPU. The CPU talks to the GPU over PCI Express, so RAM speed wouldn't benefit a GPU that's struggling to keep up with the frames already being delivered. If the game is more CPU bound or CPU bottlenecked, then obviously faster speeds will assist the CPU in producing faster frames. And while that is happening here at 1440p, we the end user won't see it. Now after I wrote that and this whole video, I was able to retest this with Mark's new GTX 1080, and the results really hit this point home. On the GTX 1070, we saw only slight gains at 1440p, but with the GTX 1080, we see in these graphs that the extra GPU headroom allows for some significant gains, with Fallout 4 and Hitman seeing over 20% higher FPS in averages. So long story short, if your CPU bottlenecked, DDR4 speeds will increase FPS, sometimes significantly, sometimes not. If your GPU bottlenecked, it probably won't. And even in the case of the CPU bottleneck, the benefits of faster RAM seem to diminish after 2800 MHz unless you have some serious hardware like the GTX 1080. So should you drop an extra 150 bucks on that RGB set of 1400 MHz RAM? Probably not. Not unless you have the other hardware to go along with it. However, on the flip side of this, I do think higher speed RAM would be worth it in some cases considering the marginal pricing differences right now. Buying a 16 gig kit of 2800 MHz RAM will only set you back around $15 more than 2133. So unless you are really pinching pennies, I would go ahead and get the faster sticks. Just don't aim for those overpriced, super high speed ones. Well, unless you really like RGB lighting. Okay, I think that's about it for this video. I hope it helps someone out there. If you have any questions or comments about DDR4 speeds, 
make sure to leave a comment below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sure you know what to do. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one in the future. Coming up soon, I've got a Ryzen 1600 vs Intel i5 video in the works. Also, maybe a video on some E3 thoughts. So be sure to keep an eye out for those. And as always, thanks for watching.